Welcome back. So it's finally time that we actually start learning about JavaScript and its syntax. And the first place that we're going to start is with its basic built-in primitive data types. So we have a few objectives here. The first is that we want to understand the five primitive data types in JavaScript. Next, we want to work with numbers and some of the built-in numeric operators. And then finally, we're going to talk about strings and common string methods and operators. So one of the big ideas at the core of every programming language is the language's ability to differentiate between different categories of data. So for instance, a language could differentiate between a number and a word. Or it could differentiate between a whole number and a fractional number, or a positive number and a negative number. And so these vary from language to language. So in JavaScript, there are five primitive data types. There are five low-level basic types of data. And we're going to do a quick overview of the five first. And then we're going to dive into detail in the following slides. So the first one is numbers. And I have three examples here. A whole number, 4. A fractional or a decimal number, 9.3. And a negative number, negative 10. And I chose these three because I wanted to show you that JavaScript doesn't care if a number is whole or if it's fractional, if it's negative. They're treated all as just numbers. It's a broad category. So other languages do differentiate, but JavaScript doesn't. So again, numbers, it's just a category for whole numbers, fractional numbers, and negative numbers. The next category that we have, the next data type, are called strings. And strings are basically text. So the important thing is that they're inside of quotes. You can see here, we have two examples. So we have the word hello space world inside of quotes. That is one string. Even though it's multiple words, it's one string. Same thing here. This is a number, 43, but it's inside of quotes. So it's actually considered a string to JavaScript. So we can have numbers, we can have any character inside of a string. So the next type is the Boolean. And Booleans only have two options. They're either true or they're false. There's no quotes, there's no numbers. It's just the word true or the word false. And that's it. So why we would actually use these will become much clearer in a few videos from now. But I just want to let you know, Booleans exist, true or false, yes or no. And then there are two more types, null and undefined. And these are actually values. So they're not really a category. There's not multiple types of null or multiple types of undefined, like there are for numbers or strings. There is only one null and there's one undefined. They're just values. And we'll learn a lot more about these in the next video, but I just want you to be aware that they exist. So numbers, strings, booleans, null, and undefined. So let's dive a little bit deeper into JavaScript numbers. And to do that, I can actually open up my JavaScript console because I'm in the browser right now. This is a web page that I'm on. So I'm going to open up my console, Command Option J. Feel free to do this. You can do this on any site. And I'm going to start typing some code. And the first bit of code that I'm going to type is really, really simple. It's not going to do much. I'm just going to type a number and hit Enter. So in the console, when I type a value like a number and I hit Enter, all that happens is that it spit back at me. It's just returned to me. The value just shows back up. So I can type a negative number, negative 99, hit Enter, and I get negative 99. So I know this is very, very basic stuff. We're not making any exciting applications just yet. But bear with me. Very soon, we'll be using these numbers to do more interesting things. So the first thing that we can do with these numbers is simple mathematical operations. So these are things that you're already familiar with from basic math away from the computer. So things like addition, multiplication, subtraction, um, and division. And the way that those work, we just write some simple expressions. So a number like 4 plus sign 100. And you may notice I use two spaces here on either side of the plus sign. That's not mandatory. So if I hit enter right now, I get four, I get 104. But I could also do something like 3 plus 7 with no spaces. And that works as well. So those are simple operators. I can also chain them together. So I can do 5 plus 4 plus 3. And I get 12. And I can use other operators too, like division. So let's do 6 divided by 2. I hit Enter, and I get 3. I can also do things like 1 divided by 3, and you'll see I get 0 0.333 repeating. 
So just to wrap up here, we also have subtraction. Let's do 1 minus 54. I get negative 53. And then we also have multiplication. So 2 times 5 is going to give us 10. Another important concept is that JavaScript follows the order of operations that all regular math follows as well. So something like 3 minus 8 times 24 is going to follow the op order of operations where the parentheses will denote that 3 minus 8 needs to be done first and then we'll multiply by 24. So we get negative 120. At the bottom of this slide, there's another operator called modulo. And modulo is usually unfamiliar to my students who have not done any programming before. It's often called the remainder operator, and in some languages, it's also called modulus. What it does, um, first of all, it uses a percentage sign. So division is a slash, multiplication is the star or asterisk. Modulo is a percentage sign. So we can type a simple one like 10 mod 3. People often say mod is a shortcut. And what it will do, it will take 3 and divide it into 10 as many times as it goes in as a whole number. So that would be 3 times. And then it will take the remainder. So the remainder, 3 goes into 10 3 times, which is 9, and the remainder is 1. So we get 1. So as another example, let's take 20 mod 5. And in this case, 5 goes into 20 4 times. There is no remainder, so we get 0. So the next data type that we're going to focus on is the string. So strings are text, they are words, numbers, characters inside of quotes. And those quotes can be single or double quotes. So just as an example, we'll go down to the console and we can type something like, hello class, hit enter. And just like the numbers before, it just spits the value back at us. So we can do the same thing with single quotes. Dogs are awesome, single quotes, hit enter, and it spits it back out to us. Notice that it does show it to us in double quotes. That's because it treats them the same way. One small note, if we did something with double quotes, like hello, and we ended it with a single quote, that gives us a problem. They need to match. One other note about single versus double quotes is that I can have a string that uses both. So I can have a double quoted string with a single quote inside of it. For example, if I wanted to have a string that said, I can't stop eating candy, I have a single quote right here in between the N and the T. That is totally valid because I'm using double quotes on the outside. If I was using single quotes, I can't stop and I use single quotes, we have a problem. You can see that it thinks the string ends right here, when in reality, I wanted it to end over here. So one of the things that we can do with strings is add them together. Just like with numbers, where we could write one plus five, we can do the same thing. We can have a string plus another string. And what happens is JavaScript will combine them into one string, and that's called concatenation. So if I do this, hi plus goodbye, and I hit enter, I get one string, hi, goodbye. So if I wanted a space in there, I would just need to either add a space here or add a space here. And then I get hi, goodbye with a space in between. So that's called concatenation. So sometimes we might want to actually have a double quote inside of a double quoted string. So maybe we have something like she said goodbye like this. And I want this to be double quoted. I don't want to change it to single quotes. There is a way I can do that. And it's using something called an escape character. So JavaScript escape characters all start with a backslash. And what they are, they are ways of escaping out of the string and writing special characters that might not be valid in the string. So backslash and then followed by a double quote is how we tell JavaScript that we want a double quote in the string. So if I hit enter, you'll see that it's actually just turned into this. So let me show you again without the backslashes. And if I hit enter, we get an error. That's because it thinks this is the first string, this is a second, this is in no man's land. 
But if I go back, by the way, I'm hitting the up arrow there. So if I hit the up arrow, it will bring back previous lines of code so I don't have to write all of them again. So if I bring this back with the backslashes, I get she said backslash quote goodbye backslash quote. It just gives me she said goodbye with no backslashes. So there's another escape character. If I want a backslash in my string, if I actually want that character to be there, I could do something like this. To see a backslash, it starts with backslash and then another backslash. And that will give us to see a backslash, just one there. So every string that we create has a length property. And that length property refers to the number of characters in that string. So if I create a string that is just hello in all caps, and I do dot length on it, it tells me that's five characters long. And if I do something like my favorite number is one, two, three, four, that is apparently 27 characters long. I won't count it, but it does include a space and includes all the numbers and includes this character as well, the colon. So every character, whatever it is, is going to be counted. So we can retrieve the entire length of a string using the dot length property. And we can also retrieve individual characters, like the first character, the fifth character, using this square bracket notation right here. So the way that it works, we write the square brackets and then give it a number inside. And that number will correspond to the position in the string of the character that we want. And JavaScript starts counting at zero. So to get the first character, let's make a string, the Beatles. And if I want the first character, I use zero because JavaScript starts keeping track at zero. That is the first character. And it gives me capital T. So if I wanted to get the capital B here, I would need to do zero, one, two, three, four. And I get capital B. And if I wanted to get the very last character, I could either count. So one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that gives me S. Or I could use the length property. So I know that the Beatles dot length is 11. And that's because it starts counting at one. It's just the number of characters. But the positions are kept track starting from zero. So the last character, S, is always, the index is always one less than the total length. So just a side note. Um, you might be wondering, why would you ever want to find the length or why would you ever find uh, the 10th character of a string if you can just see the whole string right here? And there are answers for that that we'll see very shortly when we cover variables.